Are we live? Thanks, Ron. Uh, and thank you to the board for inviting us here this evening. We appreciate it. Um, and it actually, Al mentioned, or pardon me, Ron mentioned quorum. If you need council to do anything tonight, we do have quorum. <laughs> so, you know, we, could, we can quickly pass something if you need it. Very pleased to welcome you here this evening to the uh, Sport of Our Annual General Meeting. It's great to see the participation, uh, see so many people in the chamber. Uh, with, with respect to the 150, I'm actually going to let Al deal with most of the details because really he's been the one who's been spearheading most of this. But it is a very important part in Aurora's history, 150 years. Uh, we've started off, uh, Hillary House has actually started off in terms of this, their 150th anniversary of this year, the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812 with the Queen's York Rangers. Uh, as well as next year they will be celebrating some significant events as well. Uh, so we're very much looking forward uh, and uh, to, to not only um, celebrating uh, our 150th, but getting citizen input on various things that uh, we'd like to do. I'd also like to uh, very quickly recognize Bob McRoberts as a former councillor here who's joining us this evening as well. And um, we thank you, Bob, for doing that. So I really just wish to thank you for coming this evening. And I am going to, Ron, with your permission, I will turn it over to Al to speak specifically to, to some of the impetus uh, around the 150th. Great, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. And thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, it's great to see so many familiar faces. Um, and um, uh, sesquicentennial, Aurora is going to turn 150 years old in 2013. And um, so we've been given some thought as to what we could or couldn't do with regards to uh, celebration in the community. Um, uh, first thing we did was, uh, or one of the things we did was uh, contact Catherine from the Historical Society and Catherine was, was kind enough to look through the archives and kind of found out a little bit about what they did in, in um, 1963, or for their, for their uh, 100th anniversary, and so it um, uh, gives us some idea of some of the activities that took place back then, but we're looking for um, uh, some new activities and some, some participation uh, on our 150th. Um, staff had, had been asked um, through a notice of motion to prepare um, some information on the sesquicentennial, and um, it created uh, a lot of discussion at the council table, a lot of good discussion at the council table, with regards to what might or might not be with regards to the 150th. And um, uh, the direction uh, that ultimately came from council last Tuesday evening was they asked the uh, staff, me, uh, to uh, create a terms of reference that uh, identified a community-based um, committee with regards to uh, the sesquicentennial. In other words, they wanted the community to drive this, uh, this event, not staff. And um, they wanted to elicit as much community participation with regards to the 150th and the activities that might take place with regards to the 150th through the community and not staff. So we are going to be coming back to council, uh, not tomorrow night, but a week tomorrow night, uh, with regards to a terms of reference which identifies um, a community uh, committee that will, um, as we are presenting to it, since council hasn't seen it yet, I'm going to be talking about some stuff that they aren't even quite aware of yet, but um, the, um, uh, a community group that will be uh, charged to come up with some ideas with regards to what can take place or, uh, within, uh, within Aurora over the, uh, over the 150th. Um, what type of events they want to take place, what kind of budget they might need, what kind of partners they might be interested in, um, in uh, uh, um, partnering with on, on certain activities. Um, and very much, as they say, a grounds up uh, approach, uh, community based approach. So we are thinking of a committee somewhere around five or six members that then would be the driving um, group to certainly um, solicit uh, information uh, and participation from the, the greater community. Um, even in conversation, <coughs> excuse me, with Ron today about this, um, we had, I basically um, looked at some uh, groups that we think might be interested in, uh, or would be key individuals with regards to um, the community group, um, such as perhaps the Historical Society, 
or the Chamber of Commerce or, uh, or the Heritage Advisory Committee, or there's a number of groups. But one of the groups certainly is Fort Aurora. Um, and, and we were thinking maybe, maybe, there's a, maybe there's a member of Sport Aurora who would like to um, um, be on the committee and be um, the liaison um, with regards to bringing sport activities um, that are unique to our 150th to the fore. Uh, such as, as, as Ron said, maybe we, maybe we go for retro uniforms in, in, in 150th for, for many of our events. Or maybe we get a patch and each, each uniform has a particular patch so that it's something that um, you can have as a keepsake uh, over a period of time. Um, particular events or, um, um, or going back to heritage equipment and some, some, some events that perhaps uh, we, that could take place. Um, there's a number of different things that, that could happen and we are very much in the infancy stage. In fact, not one event has been planned as of today. Okay, so if that's not the beginning, I don't know where it is. Okay, so we haven't so we haven't moved forward on anything in particular. We have no budget. All of that has to be established. Um, we uh, we have some ideas. Um, we have things like uh, um, I think it'd be kind of, kind of cool if we had uh, uh, if we had a mayor's levy or or something to kick off the event uh, in in the hundredth year ceremony. They only or for the celebration they only did it for a week. They did it from June 30th to July 6th, I believe, and so they concentrated all the events into one week. Um, that certainly is, is a thought. We were thinking perhaps it's something that we could spread it over the year. Um, perhaps there's a time capsule that uh, might be of some interest uh, and, and something that we could open up in a, for, our, for our 200th anniversary. Um, it would be kind of interesting. Uh, I know when they did the, uh, the time capsule here for Town Hall, and I actually got the list of some of the things that's in there because I was kind of interested in what goes in a time capsule. I noticed they have some VCR tapes in, uh, in the time capsule here uh, at Town Hall, which is supposed to be opened up in 100 years. Well, I don't know who that, who the heck's going to have a VCR in 100 years. It's just amazing how much the technology has come since we opened this building in, uh, uh, what was it, 86, I think? 91, 91. So since 91, no one uses VCRs anymore. It's just, uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. So it'll be kind of, uh, uh, like I say, it'll be interesting to see what we put in the time capsule and, and, and uh, you know, perhaps a memorial uh, of some type to, to mark the occasion. There's a number of different things that we could look at. So I'm here this evening to, to get your interest up on what's going to happen in Aurora in, 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 uh, in 150. We really need to start looking and concentrating, certainly from a community, on, on what, we'd like to, what we'd like this 150th to look like. Um, I know for the, for the 100th, they, they developed the sunburst as their emblem, and that sunburst was everything, uh, was, was everywhere. Um, that was uh, certainly the beginning of some of, the, of some of the parades that we had in town. Um, and so there were some things that carried out uh, from, the one, from, the, from the 100th that carried in even into today. And certainly we would like to look at um, creating something that would um, certainly mark our 150th, but perhaps it's something that we would do year after year after year. And there are some other groups that are marking that the next year as a special occasion as well. Certainly talking to former Councillor uh, McRoberts, uh, he's working on G.W. Williams 125th. And uh, so um, I can see a, a real good partnership there. We just missed the Hillary House by a year, but that's okay. Uh, but um, uh, there are a number of groups that perhaps might be interested, certainly from a sporting uh, uh, perspective. So I invite you to contact me or uh, contact your local member of council or even, uh, or even come to the council meeting when it's going to be discussed on uh, a, week, uh, a week tomorrow and express your, uh, your interest um, and uh, your, um, uh, well, I guess your interest in being part of, that, uh, part of that process. What we're hoping to do is solicit names from all over the community. Um, that set of names will go to council in their July meeting and we'll be asking council to select the committee from those names at their July meeting and we're hoping soon after that the planning for the 150th begins in earnest. So those are, that, that's basically the process that we're looking at right now. Uh, and as I said, we are looking for some, uh, some participation. I'd love to see a Sport Aurora representative. I'd love to see someone leading the charge uh, and identifying sporting activities that were going to be unique to Aurora and celebrate our 150th. So uh, if you have any questions, I'll answer them now. If not, I really appreciate your attention and thank you very much for this opportunity.
Thanks, Your Worship, and uh, um, thanks to everyone here. It's uh, great to be here to talk about this uh, um, exciting development. I'm Daniel Atlin. I'm uh, Vice President of Strategy and College Affairs uh, for Seneca. And I'm with me today is... Tina DeSimone. I'm the Dean of Applied Arts and Health Sciences and the Principal of King Campus. So we're here actually to talk about a, a project uh, that, is, that has been uh, ongoing, as, as Ron indicated, been uh, in development now. And it's at a very exciting stage. And I think there's some parts of it uh, that aren't necessarily in the first phase that we're talking about that actually have a particular import, perhaps, to this group. Um, so with that, we're just going to give a quick little overview about uh, uh, the, the King property, just because I'm not sure if everyone knows about it, despite the fact it's just 10 minutes from Ron's, uh, Ron's front door. Um, it is very close, but it's a very special place, and we feel honored to be able to be, be the stewards for this property. Uh, as Ron indicated, we did purchase this from the, uh, from the Eaton uh, estate in 1971, and since that, we've grown to about 3,400 uh, full-time students. Uh, we also host uh, um, King day, uh, day Camps there in the summer, and we have uh, between 500 and 700 uh, um, uh, children there attending our, our day camps, and they have for, for many, many years. And of course, it's also the, uh, the home for a lot of different uh, community events, um, not just for, for the King community, but also for the surrounding York region. In fact, in the middle of August, you'll see uh, some dragon boats actually going across uh, the, the lake because um, that's where the United Way actually hosts their, their, their Dragon um, Boat, boat uh, Festival and, and contest. Um, we do have plans, and, and, and the plans are to, to actually grow this campus significantly. And right now we are seeing that we would grow this campus to be about uh, 7,500 students by 2021. And this is to take uh, advantage of the, uh, the wonderful site that actually is there. Um, as you can see, it's, it, it's, a, it's a very large site. It's about 700 acres. And um, it's uh, um, got a lot of very special features. Um, so what we have done is that, that uh, in 2010, we actually responded to a, a provincial call for action expansive, expansion of post-secondary spaces in Ontario. And it was sort of a competitive process where we applied with, with all other uh, institutions across uh, uh, Ontario. And we actually were, were proposing to revitalize the King campus because there hasn't been a significant investment in that campus since the 70s. And we also want to revitalize it and also expand it. Um, we also, for the long, longest time, about the last decade, have had uh, discussions with the uh, York Region Police and also other, other um, York Region Safety um, uh, Services about creating a joint uh, training facility there. So um, the proposal which we had was actually to bring 1,500 students uh, to that to, that, to the uh, King campus. We would also um, get rid of actually some aging portables there. There are about 20 portables there, and they have, I think I actually may have gone to school in, in one of those portables. That's how old they are. Um, but it's really important for us to modernize our, our classrooms, our labs, and also other space. But also, most importantly, perhaps, because of the uh, fact that this campus was actually created for about uh, 1,300 students rather than 3,400 students, there's a desperate need for actually athletic and recreation space, student club space, as well as other space for, for students. Especially um, um, students actually study far differently uh, and, and, and they operate far differently than they did in 1970. Um, and of course, we also um, had that, that proposal for the joint training facility with the York Region Police. So uh, we were successful in actually uh, winning uh, some, some, some uh, 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 some money from, from, the, from the province. They've committed it to provide us with $43 million. And this adds on to um, what we are actually contributing as well. We've committed to um, contributing $15 million of our own funds. In addition to the students, um, in a show of, of, of how desperate um, the need for uh, facilities in, in there and how much they value the King property and want to expand it, have actually committed to uh, um, contributing $20 million through um, paying of annual fees. In addition, the, the York Region Police has actually committed $18 million in principle to build actually a, a, a training facility uh, up, up at the, the King Campus, which we would jointly sort of, sort of uh, um, work with. So that's about a total of about a $100 million investment. Um, so right now we're actually uh, in, the, in the process of working with Infrastructure Ontario and uh, all our project sponsor, uh, partners in order to ensure that, uh, that these, this new um, uh, uh, development will actually uh, align with uh, Seneca's master plans for, 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 for the King Campus. And uh, the proposed timeline for, for this, uh, this build is to coming 
into 2015 and 2016. So we are also, um, uh, as, as we'll walk through, we have, we have a broader vision for the campus beyond this, 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 this first build. Uh, the first build is, is actually the, uh, the main precinct part of our campus. And um, then we're also looking for, for, for further development as well. So the, the main precinct part of the campus is actually um, um, the, the piece here that is actually, you can see here, it's, it's on the, uh, the west side of, of uh, Lake Seneca. So if I could just add here, the gray shaded space is existing build. So this would be our Gary Alcar residents, current residents in the Animal Health Building. So the plan would be to look at a phase one to start with a, a new building or buildings, I like to say buildings, and then eventually look at building um, a college um, precinct or campus with more um, concentrated buildings close together versus the way the current system is, is that they're very, very far apart. Students tend to park in one area and drive to the other buildings. It's, it's creating a far more... Mm -hmm. But this is actually a 25-year vision, so, so, so we're actually doing the first step here in the next few years that will actually bring about this first bit quite close to the, um, the, the top of actually of, of, of uh, the main campus precinct. And that's where we will be investing uh, uh, the bulk of, 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 our, of our funds. The other, the other funds will actually be sp um, spent on, on site servicing issues as the big pipe is not quite up uh, to the King campus, so we'll have to bring that to the campus and also update a lot of the other existing infrastructure. It's very exciting. We actually are planning under this an expansion of our, of our residents as well. Um, we currently have uh, residents up there for about uh, uh, 300 students. Um, we're probably gonna expand that at least by doubling it because mm -hmm. um, we realize that, that uh, it, it's, it's very important for our students. And of course, that residence also serves as a conference center um, during the summer months and also can be used by, by outside uh, parties during the year. So uh, our, our vision as well is to have um, two other precincts, one of which was, was the uh, East Village Precinct, which is just a, uh, we, we see this as actually, perhaps in the future, some, some other partnerships with other academic institutions, um, perhaps with applied research as well. But the piece that has the, the most excitement, I think, and is most pertinent to this crowd, is actually the, the South Campus uh, Athletic Precinct. And this, in, in, our, in our master plan and our visioning exercise, has been really seen as sort of joint community um, and, and Seneca space, primarily existing to bring you know, a athletic and recreation infrastructure in, in, into this part of the, of the York region. Well, and there was much gen excitement generated by, by the King Township when we actually discussed this, and actually this plan is, was developed actually with their input. So we see that uh, this could, in the future, um, be a very exciting site. It's perhaps about 40, 40 acres in, in total. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you take a look, even up here, there's actually, a, 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 right currently, a couple of a, a, a practice soccer fields as well. What you'll see here is infrastructure that's on here that is actually just a, a placeholder. And um, you know, th th there are different ways that you, you could uh, um, configure things on here to maximize the footprint. But what is quite clear is that, is that uh, this is what we, we, we envision to be uh, a site that would be used by uh, outside community organizations, um, perhaps uh, at times with, 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 with Seneca as well. It would align very well with, with our programming that we actually have at the King Campus, um, which is a lot of uh, health programs, and perhaps, why don't, why don't you give the overview? Yeah, the, the, the portfolio of King Campus is Applied Arts and Health Sciences, so it's uh, public safety, uh, community health and recreation, uh, community studies, nursing, and early childhood education as the, the clusters of programs. Um, the area where we're short is our recreation in terms of uh, appropriate athletic space, and I think Ron can attest to that, um, and growing our recreation and therapeutic recreation type programs. So our hope for the build, our, this first precinct build, and secondly is to develop um, student use space for sports and recreation. And we see that this is also very, you know, synergistic with our programming. There's ability for us to be able to connect uh, some of our students and, and, and our faculty with what's happening there. It also will assist us in the development, perhaps, in, in future programming as well. Um, but pretty much that, that, that's the vision. Right now, as we indicated, 
you know, we, we are focused on the, uh, the west side of, 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 of the property with, with this $100 million that, we're, that we, we have to invest. $100 million doesn't go quite, quite, as, quite as, as, as far as, as, as it used to, especially when you're talking about a renewal of, of such a significant size in bringing uh, 1,500 students um, um, to, that, to that campus. But we're really open to, to many discussions about possibilities which could happen in these uh, uh, 40 acres. It's, it's you know, quite clear that, that uh, you know, this, this part of the York region is, uh, does need um, extra uh, sports and, and, and recreation facilities. There certainly is a lot of interest from, from King, and we recognize that there's a, there's a surrounding uh, community um, quite nearby as well that, that could access this. So that's the overview. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Uh, questions, folks? Any uh, questions from the, uh, from the group assembled here? John? Uh, what's your time? So the timing, we're, we're still focused on the west side all the, all the time. So our, our timing there is certainly 2015, 2016. Um, we have a firm commitment because we have to actually bring 1,500 students up there for 2016. So uh, without that, actually, the, the ministry won't flow the dollars, so we won't get our 43 million. So that's why we're so focused on, on, on that side of the campus. That being said, there would be some uh, facilities that we'd be building um, through our student funds and, and, and for the campus that could possibly have a, have a connection to here but we don't have any timing whatsoever for this corner. And, and how would one go about getting involved in the, the community side of the project? Well, I, th I, th I think we'd, um, uh, we're, we, we, I think we could sit down, we, we'd bring together some partners, um, perhaps bring a, uh, King, King together to the table as well and talk about uh, what, what could happen there and in, 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 in under what time frame. We do, we do know that there's a lot of interest uh, in, in that uh, site. Not just, I should mention, from, from uh, community groups and, and uh, public groups, but also from some uh, private sector folks as well. Um, seems to be a very attractive uh, location, um, which, which I, I, I think seems to be uh, driving a lot of interest. So we're, we're looking forward to doing this, but, but I think it's important to know we want to do this in the right way as well. We don't want to build something that's not going to be of use to the broader public. We don't want to build something that's going to probably be focused on one single sport. We want, we want to be able to make it uh, as connected as possible and serve as many needs as possible. Not soon enough would be, have been my answer. <laughs> Right now, it's a placeholder for, 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 for many different things. Uh, ice ring would certainly be a possibility. Certainly no country day school down, down, down the street is, is actually looking, uh, would be interested in an ice rink as well. We're, we, we remain pretty much facility neutral, I guess, in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, although, although I think we have a little bit of a bias against having a, a, a pool just because of the high sort of, sort of a, a liability issues, but also upkeep and, and, and deferred maintenance issues. No, building U, and it should be should be known that the, the other buildings have similar similar letter names, so it's not U doesn't stand for for anything. Um, but no, we, had, we hadn't any envision for this. This, this. this was viewed as possibly sort of a field house or, 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 or a, it could be um, uh, at some point that somebody was saying it could be possibly a, a community center as well as some other facilities. These are, these are generic sort of block, blocking right now. So, uh, you know, it, it could, be, uh, could be anything. I, I think it's a matter of getting people in, in, in the room together and, and, and just sort of seeing what we can, what we can do to, to, to achieve that. You know, we're, 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 we're happy to see that development on the east side as soon as possible because it is synergistic with, with what we're doing. It provides better community, it brings community onto the campus, which is core to our mission as well. So I think we can have those discussions. We do know, and, and I was having breakfast with someone today who's, who's uh, uh, related to the, the uh, who's involved with the, with the Pan Am Games, and they were indicating that there's still a, a Pan Am Games uh, uh, rugby field and maybe a, f a field hockey field as well that, 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 that there's no site actually that's been, uh, been identified for. So that there's possible opportunities there as well. But I, uh, 
but I think that, it, that, that uh, the, 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 you know, the sooner we can have discussions, the better. The reason being is that as we're planning the site infrastructure for, for the west side, it's good to know what we need to do to make the east side happen as well. So um, absolutely, I, I, th I think uh, sooner is better. And if I could add to that, the money that we have received in funding for the academic space is tied to our deliverables, specific deliverables that we have to meet. Right now, we're not tied to anything here, except that we want it to be community-based, uh, synergized with Seneca's activities and whatnot, so there's more flexibility here. But there have been many discussions going on with many different parties interested in space. I mean, everybody's having the same issue, so we need to figure out a way of what's going to be best for Seneca and best for our community in this space. Would it be fair to call that thing community partnership space or something along those lines? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the intent. That's the intent. In fact, we, we, never, we never envisioned, actually, that we would be doing this investment here. Um, just especially with the, with the, with the, with the, with the we, Seneca's funded by the province. Um, that's where we get, get our, all of our funds for infrastructure. We don't imagine we're going to get any more money from the province for infrastructure, uh, probably for the next decade. So, so that's why we're, we're, we're spending it on our core space over there, be able to modernize that, because that's, that's our, our, our core business, as it were. So. Um, uh, that, that's why, unfortunately, um, we, ha we had to park sort of that, this vision and make it into a community vision as, oppo as opposed to ours. But I think what you can see here is that in the long run, you can create something very, very special. And we're very excited about this. Uh, we know our King community uh, surrounding us is very excited about it as well. So, so it's a great vision. And we'd love to do whatever we can to accelerate it. So York Region Police is, is yep. Up, up there. So it's the idea of the joint training facility space. They have space <coughs> issues and, of course, resource issues. We have space and resource issues. So it's building space that we can share for teaching and learning. So it would be safe to say that the vision that you have is you want partners to come on to bring people from the community onto the campus, experience the campus, yep. and do that in such a way that our community and people, particularly in sport, whether it be coaching, And if we discussed, it's actually very, very core and fitting into healthy lifestyle piece as well, of course, that actually fits very well with our nursing programs, early childhood education. We know how childhood obesity is, is, is a huge issue. These are, these are ways to be able to address those issues as well, perhaps bringing them into the early childhood education curriculum earlier as well. So be able to create sort of this, this, this uh, sort of wellness, I guess, precinct as well. Currently, it's a very small gymnasium. It's actually um, not uh, um, a regulation um, uh, um, gymnasium. It actually serves as, as, as a multi-purpose room. It actually is a former art art room at one point, apparently. Sorry, what? Art room. It's a, it's an, it was an art room. Is there plans to build? Yes, yes. There's plans to build right now a double gymnasium mm -hmm. um, with with also a field house that would allow for for um, uh, um, a fitness room and fitness studio and other studio space right now. But that's primarily focused on, on, the, on the student needs that we have right now. I think if we were to go bigger with, with the community, we probably need uh, uh, larger facilities for sure. If I could leave you with one parting challenge. So the conversation with York Region Police and the money that came for this infrastructure project has been in discussion for, I've been there five, at least 10 years, I would say. 10 years. So this is the first. As you said earlier, this is the first conversation we're having with other groups um, in terms of Sports Aurora and sports for this space. So if you can do it in less than 10 years, that's beating our, our history. So there you go. We well, really move faster. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> well, I know from our philosophy here of building capacity and integration and participation and excellence that this certainly fits our plans. And I'm quite sure there's uh, people in the room who have their own interests in whether it be volleyball a little time to let the wheels turn and to pull how people are feeling about it. Anyone in this room have any objection from us moving forward or any questions, cautions, or things that we should be uh, moving forward uh, with uh, this particular uh, project that you want the board 
forward to, to a few of us, Sarah. I guess I'm just looking at this. It's not in Aurora. It's in King City. Mm -hmm. And if there's money, funding, whatever, coming from our group, my history was at a college is that you have to pay to park, you have to pay to use the facilities. So how, how does that work? What is the payback to us right. if we participate in this? Yeah, so a partnership, true partnership, is one that works for both ways. So I, I'm, I, I hear you. I, I work there and I, I do parking. And pay for parking. I do parking. <laughs> so I understand what you're saying. That yeah. would have to be an agreement. I'm sure Jerry would be here, and he was our solicitor, the issue, but at this point, I think what we're saying is that's a precaution to be careful, yes, but we want it to be a, a win for both sides. Any others? I want to thank you both for coming here tonight and uh, being a part of this. It's an exciting project, not just for me being a senator, but also I think for the support of our and the objectives that we have here. So on behalf of the board, I want to thank you for coming here tonight. Thanks for having us. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. First of all, um, as Ron said, um, I am the program director. Um, what our primary objectives are uh, with the All Kids Can Play program is to ensure that any child who wants to partake in physical activity, sport, and recreation is able to do so and is not stopped from doing so by financial barriers. Um, what, what happens a, a lot of the time is, is that, uh, unfortunately, um, kids don't play sports because they, they simply can't, uh, uh, don't have the resources to do so. So our, one of our primary objectives, if not the most important objective, is to ensure that those kids who want to play can play. Um, to do that, um, what we're asking our members to do is to um, commit and participate in the All Kids Can Play program. Uh, just to give you an overview, we're not going to go into a lot of detail today because we've just started this program about three weeks ago and we don't uh, pretend to have everything worked out yet. We're still in the exploratory stage. But one of the things that we, we're going to need to do is to get a commitment from all our member groups to participate in this program. And by that, I mean I'm aware that some of the groups uh, do have positions available that they fill with uh, children uh, under sp special circumstances who would not normally, normally be able to play. We want to explore that avenue with all groups to see what the, the, uh, our members are doing in that regard. Uh, and if they're not doing anything, we'd like to talk to them about uh, uh, exploring the idea of doing something such as that. To the groups that don't have uh, uh, necessarily a position to, to uh, offer to, to, to a youth, to a child, um, what we'd, we'd like to suggest, and, and we'll get around to talking to all of you, is that you uh, contribute by, in some way by having some type of fundraiser or some other endeavor that you can think that may be beneficial to the children of Aurora and helping them to play sports. We do have some funding, as Ron said, and the funding, and I'm not going to repeat everything he said, but the funding is limited. Um, we are funded through the, the Jumpstart program. And uh, as Ron indicated, there's, there's not enough to do full funding, nor is there enough to meet all, all the requirements. Um, currently, uh, what we, what we like to, would like to explore is additional funding. And we'll get into that in a, in a few minutes when we get to, to another sl slide. One of the other things that we, we thought we could do is um, uh, try and, and develop some sports that are affordable for, for kids to play, that uh, don't have a high overhead and therefore wouldn't have to have a, a huge registration fee, if any, at all. We have talked to some people uh, in very general terms, and this, as again, we're in the very early stages of those discussions, but we have talked to, to some individuals who are interested in, in, in proposing uh, or pursuing um, some type of sport that is not currently offered that, uh, that we could offer. Um, so we'd like to support and encourage that from, from different parties. We, uh, as, as alluded to before, our partner in this is Canadian Jumpstart Program. Uh, we recently did a fundraiser with them at the Canadian Tire Store um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Laurie and myself uh, attended. And um, 
they they have a national fundraising program that we are we are part of. Uh, they have a formula on how they allocate it to each town. So that is an ongoing relationship that that we do have. We uh, are looking for other partners uh, if if um, it's a uh, an agreeable situation. Uh, we will explore it and, and see see where we can go from there. But right now, our existing partner in that area is the is Canadian Tire Jumpstart. Um, one of the things that we've done, we've been able to do already, and uh, again, to the generosity of this town, um, we've only been at this for a short period of time, but we do have a number of, of uh, organizations that have come forward and offered to support the program already. And one of those organizations uh, is here tonight, and uh, that would be the Rotary Club of Aurora. As uh, everybody knows, and I'm not sure I have to go into great detail, um, they are a service club that has contributed tremendously to Aurora throughout the years, and they continue to do so. I am pleased to say, in fact, that I'm a, a proud Rotarian, and at this point, um, I'd like to invite them up, because they have a special presentation for us today. They are our founding sponsor, and I'd like to welcome uh, Katie Ablett from the Rotary Club to come up, and everybody else if they'd, they'd like as well. Good. Okay, before we actually have the check presentation, I'd just like to comment on uh, part of the founding sponsorship that uh, we have uh, negotiated with or arranged with the Rotary Club is that they are going to provide Sport Aurora with, a, with a, an ambassador from the Rotary Club. That ambassador will be Katie Ablett who will um, be one of our ambassadors in the community. Uh, part of this effort uh, that she will undertake is to, 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 to communicate with di different uh, organizations, uh, education, the education people, uh, the schools, things like that. We haven't finalized it yet, um, but her role will be to be the Rotary representative with uh, Sport Aurora All Kids Can Play program. She's also expressed an interest in, in uh, the Women in Coaching program, and as we all know, any volunteers are very welcome. So I'd like to thank Katie for, for that, for that, uh, that offer. Um, what, uh, what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Katie to say a few words if she'd like. Sure. And uh, th then we'll take the, the photo up. So thank you very much, Rotarian Bruce, and, uh, and thanks to Ron for his presentation to us at our meeting not too long ago. I think he got all of us pretty excited about this opportunity, and I know for me personally, I am a young person, but for my, for my life in Aurora, I know that sport has been a huge part of my socialization process, and hindsight is 2020, and I can now credit my coaches and my teammates for a big part of my, uh, my positive experience in youth and then in adolescence and now young adulthood so I'm personally thrilled about this opportunity I'd like to thank Bruce for making it possible for me to become more involved and on behalf of President Frank Mette and the Rotary Club of Aurora we're pleased to uh, present you guys with this large check <laughs> and we we'd like to welcome uh, Ron to come up please if you would with Bruce to to accept this and uh, we look forward to working with you on this exciting all kids can play project Thank you very much for, uh, for the donation from the Rotary Club. Just in case anybody back, uh, back in the back there can't see it, it is quite a substantial ch check. Um, they have donated $5,000 to the All Kids Can Play program. Thank you very much. Uh, we are very fortunate that, uh, uh, as I said, Aurora is a giving town, and, and the Rotary Club are, are not only our, 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 our not only 
are not the only sponsors that we've been able to secure at this point. Um, they are the founding sponsor, but we do have some others who have who've, who've come on board as well. Um, first of all, uh, uh, Ross Jones uh, from Aw Shucks is, could not make it tonight, but Aw Shucks is having a golf tournament at the um, Diamondback Golf Club on July 14th. Um, Steve's shaking his head, so I have my dates right. Um, and the proceeds from that golf tournament uh, will be donated to Sport Aurora, um, the, uh, the All Kids Could Play program. So we'd like to thank Ross in, in his absence and um, uh, all shucks and everybody involved over there. So one of the things I said to you before about commitments uh, of our members is we'd ov obviously like some reciprocity in dealing with the, our sponsors. So I encourage each and every one of you to uh, do the best you can to support our sponsors in any way that you, you, you find, uh, find it in your heart. So thank you very much for that. Uh, secondly, uh, thirdly, I guess, our next uh, 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 group that has offered to provide funds to the All Kids Can Play program is the York Central Girls Hockey League. And if I could just have the two ladies from the Central York Girls Hockey, Hockey League, stand up and let us know who you are. And last on the list, but certainly not least, um, is uh, Taylor Dinner is here from Tom and Jerry's Restaurant. Taylor, could you stand up for a sec? And um, thank you very much. And what, what Tom and Jerry's has proposed to do, and uh, what they have not proposed, what they are going to do, is they're going to provide a percentage of the receipts for the months of, of July of, and August to Sport Aurora. So that anybody going to, to Tom and Jerry's during the months of July and August will be in fact contributing th through them to the All Kids Can Play program. This is uh, not something unusual for Tom and Jerry's. For any of you who have gone to any of the community events and any of the, the charitable uh, organizations that have held events in town, you very often see Tom and Jerry's there providing uh, uh, free, free food um, in, in support of the different groups around town. One of the other things that we mentioned earlier uh, was that uh, finding a way to, to initiate sports that are affordable and, and make, make sport more available to children. We've had some very preliminary discussions in that area with both uh, Taylor, his father Mike Dinner, and uh, his partner Dave Gardner. So that's uh, kind of premature to make any statements on, but just be aware that uh, they, they, they are uh, committed to this project wholeheartedly and we, uh, we uh, well, thank them very much for their efforts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know why you're beating around the bush for this new sport. Is there a reason why we haven't said the sport? Uh, Taylor's very interested in ultimate frisbee and he's very accomplished at it. So he wants to start an ultimate frisbee club for the youth and to do it in, a, in an interesting way. So I think we're all wishing well with that. And uh, we're trying to help him get, get there. So we'll go ahead and put something up there. Yeah, I'm not sure that. No, we were just, just trying to keep it high level for this, oh, this point, <laughs> or we'll be here all night. Um, okay, um, the next slide please, Javid. Okay, very quickly then, um, it's just an overview, uh, and I'm not going to read you the, the program guidelines. Uh, su suffice to say that there is a criteria test um, that, that people have to, to make to, to um, uh, qualify for the program. Um, there are dollar limits involved with the Jumpstart program. There, there are different criteria that have to be met. 
Um, so I encourage you to go to the uh, uh, Sport Aurora website and have a look at the parameters of the program if you'd, if you'd care to look at it in detail. On the other side, uh, the applica application process is very simple. Um, and w one of the things that, uh, that I'd like to just interject with here is we talked about ambassadors in the community. Um, right now, um, this might sound like a contradiction, but our, our goals are, are, are huge and we'd like to achieve them. Uh, but here's the scenario. Right now, we are out of funds with the Jumpstart program, and that's with uh, not even advertising the All Kids Can Play. We're not actively out in the community pr promoting it yet and making people aware of it. Part of the role that we'd like to see the ambassadors play, and there will be more ambassadors, not only from Rural Reap, but from different organizations, is we'd like to see, ha have them be our eyes and ears in the community and, and, and make people aware of this program and encourage people to come forward. Because let's face it, not everybody is aware of it, and not everybody will come forward. Some people may need some encouragement. So that's the role of the ambassadors in, in the community. And uh, um, on that note, the application process <clears throat> is very simple. You simply go to the website and, and uh, download the application and then send it in. It'll, it'll arrive uh, at Sport Aurora with uh, uh, Lori, and uh, we work with the town to approve the applications. We review them. Uh, we will then, uh, the checks are sent directly to the organization, not the individual, and those checks from the Jumpstart program will be issued from Jumpstart. Those that we supplement will, will come from, from us. Um, finally, uh, a, a notice to recipients will be sent to them telling them that they've, they've received the, uh, the funding. That is currently going on now, and it has been uh, uh, being done by uh, Lori and John Furman, uh, Mr. Downey's staff uh, in the town here, and it will continue to, to, to be done that way. That's all I have to say for right now, and thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Ron. Um, actually, with that, I, maybe I'll just sit down. You were doing such a good job of outlining uh, what it is that we did. Um, actually, I want to do two things. I want to talk about what we did last year because it was really the first um, event or activity that Sport Aurora did as, a, um, as an organization. And then the second part is talk about what we've got coming up for this fall as well. So, and and if, if you don't mind me saying, actually, it's quite fitting, I think, that I go after Bruce and just watching the, the people from... Uh, uh, the Rot uh, Rotary Club come up here and give it a check. I mean, this is about volunteerism, and this is the kind of spirit that we wanted to recognize. And even when I look around the room, and I see, you know, a few of you that were there last year when we did the volunteer event at Krabi Joe's in, in November, but, I mean, you are the story about what we're trying to get out there and just recognize people for what you do. So please give yourself just a, you know, just a round of applause. As Ron said, we, we were able to recognize 13 volunteers uh, from uh, all of our member organizations and the stories that were told were just truly amazing and um, each of them was very unique and it's people that, uh, you know, some of, some of which we know in the community and others that we've gotten to know a little bit better. But it was a lot of fun and quite frankly it's all about the unsung, unsung heroes that don't uh, usually get enough recognition. I mean, these are the conveners, the organizers, the people in the backgrounds that make sure that all the sports, uh, you know, can go on. Um, as I said, it was Sunday, November 6th at Krabby Joe's, and we were fortunate enough to have Wendell Clark, Angela James, and Cam Fowler uh, from Toronto Rock, uh, all of which spoke about volunteerism and how it helped them when they were uh, younger and getting started, and how, I guess in a lot of ways, they're doing that now to help uh, those that are coming along afterwards. But it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, Steve Mitchell there took uh, some good video of the event, uh, Steve Kimmer took some great pictures. It, it was a lot of fun and as I said, uh, you know, a couple of you were there and if you get a chance to come out this year, uh, we'd really like to have you out. Um, this year's event will be held on Sunday, November 4th and actually since the slide was put together, I'm now in a position to say that it will be held at Boston Pizza in Aurora. So we're really looking forward to that. Uh, it's nice to change the venue around, just keep it in town and that, but very excited about it. So thanks uh, to those that have helped us put that together. Um, what you will find in your package is there's a nomination form. And this is the item that really drives the whole process, is once we find out who the specific person is in your organization that you want to uh, recognize, and there's, in every organization there's not just one, there are many. Uh, we want you to fill that form in and then we need you to write a little narrative 
in terms of um, you know what it is that they've done because that will be the um, uh, the presentation or part of the presentation that's made in uh, in November. Um, we'd also like uh, them to bring out some some guests and certainly uh, you know make it a, a family um, event or, or certainly uh, uh, those that are in your organization should be there to to support them as well. So at least two two guests and we'll have space to to accommodate that. The nomination deadline is September 30th. So we have to do certain things to get this ready. Obviously, there's some trophies that need to be prepared, and uh, we need some lead time to do that. But uh, again, it was a terrific event last year. It was truly my pleasure to be able to uh, uh, chair the committee and also to uh, serve as the master ceremonies. And as long as you'll have me, I'm, I'm happy to do it again next year. So maybe with that, I'll, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. We're we're still we're still working on that. There's as I said, we've just uh, uh, f uh, finalized where the uh, venue is going to be for this year, and uh, now that that's come into in, into uh, you know into play, then we can uh, work with the rest of it. So, yeah, it, it it's coming. So, yeah. Oh. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked that, Mr. Mayor, um, on behalf of, uh, you know, Councillor Humphreys. Uh, one of the things that we were fortunate to have last year were, were, um, were two hockey people, and Angela James, as you may or may not know, was the first woman, woman inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame and was part of uh, the Canadian uh, women's Olympic hockey team. Obviously, many of you know Wendell lives in the area, so it was an easy thing for him to, to come out, and Cam is, is part of the, uh, the Toronto Rock. We have a number of different sports represented in this room, and what I really, truly want to do is broaden the, the, the spectrum. I mean, it, quite, honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, quite honestly, it's easy to get hockey players because a lot of them live in the area and they're, they're close by. Um, we've been looking at a few in the, in the baseball field. Unfortunately, it's not as easy, but uh, we've, we've got some feelers out there, so I can't even announce a speaker yet, but uh, we'll see. So now that Councillor Humphreys has made her intentions clear, then we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. So we'll work on it. Okay. Yep, thanks. Okay, so I'm reading from Doug's notes, um, but basically it's what we have up here. We want to recognize, celebrate, and reward and publicize Aurora's best athletes uh, who have demonstrated excellence at provincial and national levels uh, in 2011. There's a, 102 athletes and their coaches will be recognized at this point. Uh, we looked a while back, took a poll from the different organizations, asked them to give us an idea. So we know where we're at with that part of it. The date then will be Sunday, October 21st uh, in the morning, 9 to uh, 1 and it'll be at the mansion, and that's on um, 400 Industrial Parkway. The Master of Ceremonies is still to be determined. Uh, it hasn't been finalized at this stage. Uh, awards will be presented by local elite amateur and professional athletes, as well as by our sponsors. Um, the projected expenses are about $14,000. Trillium Grant will help us get started in year one for 7,000 and sponsorship, uh, hopefully a minimum of $5,000. Ticket sales from family, friends, uh, the public will be about $6,000. But the objective for this uh, Breakfast of Champions is that it becomes sustainable uh, through um, the monies that we raise uh, having guests there. And if we have about 500 guests at the uh, banquet, then that would uh, more than bring in the monies we need to, that we don't need ongoing support in the future. Uh, athletes and their coaches, their tickets will be free. The ticket cost for the guests uh, coming would be $20. Each member organization is responsible for purchasing tickets for family and friends and their athletes. And what would happen is they would, um, 
approach Lori actually will have uh, given the numbers and we'll hand out the tickets in September at that time uh, so that uh, each individual club then will handle that responsibility so if you're interested in tickets at all uh, contact Lori and uh, more information will be coming out soon and the website has uh, details on it as well um, do you have any questions at this point good I think it'll be a great event and yes Yes. And what we've done is we've gone to the uh, organizations and said, have you, do you have a provincial, national, or international athlete that has won a championship? That means, yeah, yes, then we put in a nomination for them. And that's how that 100, 102 uh, people got identified. Now it's a matter of backfilling the number of uh, guests we have. And the hall will only hold, I think, about 500 people. So the goal is to try to fill the hall. All right. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the sport organizations for being so um, accommodating and patient with all my emails and persistence so I want to thank all of you too every time you hear from me and uh, and helping me get to my my deadlines and I also want to acknowledge the town because I can't tell you how appreciative I am of having the space where I am um, Al you are very entertaining I have to say. <laughs> but I, I am very appreciative and Sport Aurora thanks the town for the space that you've given us um, by your office, um, where that's the hub of where Sport Aurora is. So thank you very much for that. Um, I want to uh, start off by saying that the Women in Coaching program on April 22nd hosted its first uh, event, and we certified 15 female coaches at, um, at Fundamentals Movement Skills uh, NCCP certification course. So Sport Aurora had its first Women in Coaching program successfully done and um, held at the Aurora Public Library. And uh, these, uh, these ladies are now on a, on a, um, what do you call it? Oh, crap. <laughs> network, N a network. So all these ladies are, are ready. I could, can't say that on camera, I'm sorry. Um, anyway. The next Women in Coaching um, introduction to Part A will be held. I'm hoping to hold that in October. And uh, that will be uh, them certifying their Part A of their levels. And a new NCC program um, brought to us, to Sport Aurora, from our newest member, Evolution Gymnastics. Uh, it's an Empower Plus NCP uh, certification program that's already full. Um, we, they brought nine coaches forward who were interested in this Empower Plus NCCP uh, certification. And the late, the remaining, only 15 spots were available. The remaining were filled by some of the ladies that took the uh, NCCP course, the FMS course. Um, so that's taking place and it was very short, done in a week, and that's being held this Saturday at, uh, hosted by Evolution Gymnastics, so thank you very much for, first of all, bringing that forward to Sport Aurora, and second of all, hosting it. And um, so we appreciate that. And uh, we'll be reporting on that course at our next meeting. And we look forward to October for the ladies getting certified in their level A, or part A. Hall of Fame is something that is, was funded through the uh, Toyum Foundation, but is funded uh, only in a way to try to build a business plan. And we have Scott here. I saw you slide in just a little bit late, Scott. So Scott will uh, stand up. This is Scott McRoberts. Scott has been uh, hired by us as a consultant to prepare the business plan and the feasibility study to go forward with the Hall of Fame uh, Trillium application. Trillium came to us last year after we made the application and said, you're not ready yet. You don't know what you're doing quite yet. 
We know you have a lot of interest and you have a good reason to do this, but we think you need a year of stumbling around and finding out who's who and how to do this right because they have funded other um, halls of fame in the past. So we took that advice and we took their money and we said to them what well, we're going to go forward with this. We got an organizing committee together and their organizing committee I think is about 14, 15 people who met regularly. And so now what we've done is we've moved uh, from all of the organizing committee and to uh, establish what we call a common vision. And so the common vision is something that Scott is going to be working with in order to put some numbers on that so that we can go back to the Trillium Foundation in, on November the 1st. So we're moving relatively quickly here. We want to have our application in on November 1st because we want it to be um, accepted and we want an award, and we'd like to see that done in March 1st, because that's when the award would come out. The reason that's important is because we want this to be one of those sesquicentennial projects. We'd like this thing to become something that happened in the 150th year. So what is that common vision right now? The common vision that we have is that there needs to be an induction ceremony where people from the past who have delivered uh, their expertise and have brought uh, notoriety to the town through sport are recognized. That's number one. Number two is we have to decide how we're going to engage our partners and the people out there, which means we're going to be looking at uh, bricks and mortar perhaps, maybe building something, perhaps moving into something that already exists. That's where the town comes in and the town in all of these halls of fame, of fame, the town has been a part of it. Sometimes they loan out space, sometimes they rent space, sometimes they build space, but they're usually a part of the program. So we're working in that direction now. We've got to identify what our partners are, and the town, we believe, is a very important partner. And as you'll see on the Board of Governors, we have people from the town uh, participating directly. The other stakeholders are the Aurora Historical Society. One of the things we did right, I think, was to get the Historical Society on side because they have the expertise. And the Historical Society brought forward a number of things that we had to consider. So we're very thankful for them coming on, on and helping us out. And the other partner was education. We felt that the Sport Hall of Fame had to be something that was delivering education, giving history. It's not just celebrating the past, but there's a reason for celebrating the past. And so we brought some education people on and we got their advice. So I think now we're ready to go forward. And so if you'll show the next slide, we've nominated uh, some people for the Board of Governors for the Aurora Sport Hall of Fame, and there they are there. Uh, there are five people in that organization from uh, on the board from Sport Aurora. You'll see two that are there from the, uh, from the town. I think there's a mistake there because uh, Mayor Daw has uh, nominated John, right, to uh, sit on it. So he's uh, nominated John to be there. So I'll go through there. Kate Collins. Kate, would you stand up, please? Okay. Kate Collins from Aurora Lawn Bowling. Bruce Cuthbert from Aurora Master Ducks. Uh, Kristen Deja, would you uh, stand up, please? Kristen, this is an interesting story. She came to us three years ago because she was an elementary school teacher and she wanted to teach her kids about history and teach them about sport history and the participation that uh, Aurora has in the Olympic Games. So she's been with us for quite some while. Uh, Al Downey, of course, uh, we've met him before. He's uh, on with us. Uh, Wayne Caldy from the uh, Aurora Historical Society, uh, he's there as well. Javid Khan from Sport Aurora and our communications guy. Uh, Michael Roy from uh, St. Andrews. Now St. Andrews College has just joined us as a, a new member in the past month. And Michael said, well, I want to be a part of this. I don't know if any of you have been to St. Andrews, but if you go down into the vaults, you'll see that they've already done this. They've done a very good job of creating the history. And how long has St. Andrews been here, 125? Yeah, so there's a, a very strong sport history of uh, St. Andrews in this town, so we're very happy to have Michael uh, volunteer his time, and of course, uh, I'm on there as well. But the other uh, people that I want to thank 
are the people from the organizing committee. My co-chair, Reg, has, when I, when I said, okay, how are we going to do this, he says, okay, well, I'll do anything you want. So just ask me to help and I'll help. So he came on and he would normally be up there, but he's now coaching a Paralympic athlete and so he's a little bit busy getting ready for London. So he decided that he was going to step away from the Board of Governors, but I want to thank you for uh, all the time that you've uh, put in there. Mayor Daw, I want to thank you as well because you've been at every one of those meetings and you've helped us out with uh, giving us some uh, ideas about how the municipal involvement could be. Uh, both Al and he worked together to take a look at other municipalities and what their uh, involvement was and their other um, important um, uh, halls of fame. Brian Larder, who isn't here tonight, many of you know Larder Creatives. He's our branding specialist and he gave us a, a branding 101 to identify what that was all about and so I think we really understand who we are and what we are. Uh, Brian Black. Um, Brian Black is a local realtor, but Brian came on because he had an uh, involvement with the Hockey Hall of Fame. So that knowledge, skill and expertise was very valuable to us on the organizing committee. Um, Bob McRoberts came on and uh, after his tutoring he would come in a little bit late and give us a, a words of wisdom and he did an awful lot of research on curr curriculum development. And sitting next to him, of course, is uh, Catherine Richards who gave us the 101 on, on collection and museums and all the other types of things that you have to do to build a very good um, set of artifacts. So I want to thank you for the uh, work that you've done on this too. I'm excited about this project. I think it's something that the town is uh, ultimately going to be very proud of, but I still believe it's going to mean that people have to provide input to it. So although those people are there trying to drive the bus, what we really need is for a lot of people to participate and it's amazing how many stories are now starting to percolate out there about this person or that person or who someone knew. You may not know that there's some fellow who came from Aurora who played on the 1890 Toronto Maple Leafs. Who knew? But somebody out there knows. So we're going to be working very diligently and our, our objective is to get to that November 1st. Now Scott, do you have anything to add about this? Thanks, Scott. Any questions that people have about the Hall of Fame before I get down out of here? None? No. Okay, Jared, what's next? I want to. Um I want to just give you a progress update in terms of what's, what's been going on in terms of communications online and, and certainly via email. Uh, the website since we last met is up and running and it's been running quite nicely, uh, trying to keep as much content as we can on the site from the member organizations and from other organizations who through Ron's uh, review and approval um, uh, would like to get our communications out. We have, uh, we've been a little um, not as organized when it comes to uh, the, the communication sort of on a consistent basis in which we want to talk about really briefly today and, and offer up a couple of things that we've been talking about as a board of directors. As you notice, once in a while, you'll get a communication from Ron here and then a couple of days later you may get another one and then there'll be a lull and then all of a sudden you get something else and there'll be a lull. And then, so we want, to, uh, we want to organize that much more uh, effectively for everyone in the organization. So. What, what, what I'm recommending tonight is moving forward, perhaps we do something on a bi-weekly basis where it's collected into, into sort of a, a one, one consistent bi-weekly communication which is done every Tuesday, every Wednesday, depending on uh, the, the days of the week, and we'll get messages out for anything from golf tournaments to member drives to people asking for funding or new things going on with Bruce's, uh, with Bruce's group or Evolution Gymnastics has got something going on at their, at their shop. So um, what, we wanna, what I want to certainly propose tonight everyone to think about is 
driving content for this communication on a bi-weekly basis. Um, I'm going to be as disciplined as I can to get it out to people because, um, you know, content is king and I, I need that fed from all the organizations and all the affiliate members and, and, um, and specific uh, members together. Um, I mentioned member pages. Uh, there are still a bunch of member pages that are blank, so uh, if people can just spend some time on your member page, whatever content, the easiest way is just fire off um, a Word document with the content that you're interested in. The key, obviously, is to keep it live and uh, keep it uh, fresh and ongoing. So there are certainly a bunch of member, organiz member organization pages that are um, blank, and you know I'll, I'll leave that to everyone uh, around the room to, to take care of that. Uh, affiliate members, again, there are some affiliate members um, who uh, I'm going to start communicating with quite uh, diligently to try to fill up their pages because they are, some of them are blank, uh, so we want to make sure that's taken care of. And the multimedia platform, I, I want to spend a little bit more time on the multimedia set, uh, side where it says media, so I want to start adding more video, more photos, so if you've got video, you've got photos from your events, I will put it onto the home page and then connect it to the media page, which, is ha which has the photo gallery. So uh, I really want to ramp that up because I'm sure since the last time we met to tonight, there's been a lot of things going on with the organizations in terms of open houses or um, weekends, uh, hockey tournaments, soccer tournaments, baseball tournaments, um, much content you can drive. I'll, I'll get it up and, and we'll get it out there as part of that bi-weekly um, communication. Can you just flip that slide, Ridge, real quick to the next slide? I think there's two slides, right? Okay. Uh, Lori's done a great job with, uh, with, with everything. Uh, you know, we don't, have, we don't have enough time to thank her for all the stuff she's done. But what, one thing she mentioned is, uh, is a sport or a member organization sort of moniker that I call, that I think moving forward, uh, effective tonight, everyone in this organization who's, uh, who's in good standing um, can utilize a sport or a member organization moniker wherever you want. If you want to put it on your email signatures, your marketing material, your websites, uh, and link it back to sportaurora.ca, go nuts. Uh, we, we want as much linkable between the communities as we can because it helps everyone in terms of your search engine optimization and all this good stuff. Um, member communication, I'll just come back to you real quick. Um, uh, affiliate members, bi-weekly we talked about. So constant contact and member communication, Ron and I and the group have been talking quite regularly about, you know, we, we do a lot of communication and we want to systematize it. We want to make sure it's streamlined. We also want to make sure and we want to work together to ensure that is the most effective means. So we have been talking about possibly if people, and I'll leave this sort of to everyone tonight, um, Constant Contact is an email service provider that I've been using for about eight and a half years. Um, I use it on a number of occasions with the company that I'm, I, I run a company, so I, I use it for other organizations I work for. But constant Contact and member communication, one idea here we've been talking about is possibly if you are comfortable, uh, we would then launch communications on your behalf to your members. So when a communication is done, uh, we would then package the same communication Re, um, recustomize it for your members and then send it out and it would be slapped on with the president's name or whoever is familiar in the organization. The kicker here is um, for us to do that we need to get the list of your members so we would then feed it into the email service provider constant contact and then we would send it out on an automated basis and therefore everyone would know uh, in your organization uh, and we would do the all, well I would do all the heavy lifting for you um, the key, though, is we need to get your member organization's uh, lists so we can, emails, so we can put it into the email service provider. So just food for thought, because we want to make it as effective as we can. So we figured, okay, you know, when I raised my hand with, at a meeting, I said to Ron, look, I'll, I'll do the heavy lifting. If, if that means, you know, us packaging the communication and sending it on your behalf. Um, and I've done that uh, a, a number of, couple of times with Dave Giroux with Aurora Baseball, um, and certainly we can do the same where I can put your name on there. It's literally coming from you. They won't know any, anything else, and it's packaged in a very organized manner, and I'll do the heavy lifting and just send it out the, the key there is. The other item I want to just introduce tonight is this sort of pilot project that we've been talking about in terms of what do we do online and really increase our online presence and really leverage media, and we've got a great uh, friendship and partnership with Stephen Mitchell and Genmark Digital and media, and so what do we do? So we were talking about a couple of old shows that used to be on, on 
ACI, I forget the, the two gentlemen used to, what is it called, Sport Beat, what is it, that? right? Sport Beat, so we thought, hey, that's an interesting concept. So we came up with Sport Aurora TV, and tonight I want to show you just a sort of a promo, a couple of minutes. The full length is currently live on the website, so if you want to see the full length, we've got two of our stars here tonight from Evolution Gymnastics, and uh, so there were three that were featured, Evolution Gymnastics, yeah, they're here, they'll, they'll stay after for autographs. Evolution Gymnastics, Aurora Baseball, no bias, but Aurora Baseball was involved, and um, we had Reg and Summer involved in terms of these, the swimming. So I'm just gonna, I'll show you a quick clip just to give you an idea. So here's a call to action, and an action item for everyone in the room. If you are interested and you want to be featured and you want, you think you have a great story or, or you wanna have us come out and do the video and get you on Sport Aurora TV, um, more than happy, you know, we're, we're gonna certainly uh, start to organize all this. What you're gonna see tonight is a pilot, so there's graphics that are not necessarily there. You know, Steve's been under the weather, he's done a phenomenal job with, with, with uh, what, what he's working with, and he's, um, you know, he's a rock star. He's really done a great job with what, what he's working with. So there are some graphical elements that are, are not there, but uh, we're gonna work on this. It's pilot, it'll just give you a flavor of what the online presence we want in terms of Sport Aurora TV. Um, we're still working on our, our host or hostess. Um, we, we had a couple of fillers, Lori and, and Ron, the two other rock stars in the room. So, you know, we're working on that, and so, um, it's uh, just tonight, just want to give you a flavor, and if you're interested, by all means, contact Lori, and we'll, uh, we'll plug you in, and we'll try to figure this thing out uh, sooner than later. I started competitive swimming at the age of nine. I've been in the pool since I was two years old. I mean, my family does swimming lessons and uh, we're completely based off of swimming. So um, in my household, it's you know held really high. Um, I was competitive at nine, went to Olympic trials as an able-bodied athlete at 13 in 2008 for the Beijing trials. Um, after that, later that year, I got into a trampoline accident as a trampoline athlete and then uh, ended up breaking both my feet, spending half a year in a wheelchair, uh, two years on crutches, said I'd never walk again, and then uh, I went and I got assessed for Paralympics, and now I'm in the Paralympic side instead of uh, the able-bodied side. Let's talk a little bit about what's uh, going on this year. Now, last year you had a banner season. You, uh, your team won the OBAs and the, uh, uh, the York Region Championship yep. as well. You're the t team of the year. So you've lost a few players this year. Yeah, we had 12 players last year. We won the York Simcoe uh, Tier 2 Championship, the Bantam A Ontario Championships, and uh, we were voted uh, York Simcoe Team of the Year, uh, minor Bantam and above of all the teams in York Simcoe, so that was a big honour. Uh, we lost five of our 12 guys. Uh, three of them moved on to play on uh, elite travel teams that are travelers travel to the U.S. and all around Ontario every weekend, so we're really proud of those guys. In fact, we got one other boy, Jesse, that's still with us that's also playing in one of those teams, but he's, he's doing both, so he's pretty much playing ball seven days a week. And uh, one of the other boys is playing with our Bantam team. He was a year younger, and uh, one is a AAA hockey player, and he, uh, he just it was a little too much to him both, so he's going to concentrate on hockey right now. What is it about Sport Aurora that drew you to become a part of, of us? I think we have a very similar philosophy in that it's about participation, and it doesn't matter if you're an elite athlete or a beginner or a weekend warrior. There's a place for you in Aurora in sport, in athletics, and it's going to lead to a healthier lifestyle. And also, it's been proven that children, especially that participate in sports at any level, they are more primed for learning and they tend to do better in school. And it's just, it's just good, all around good. And that's why we wanted to be part of that. So... Pricing, we, did, we went through a, a fairly in-depth uh, policy about four years ago. Um, we are now looking at um, an, up, uh, an update or review of that policy. Um, so Parks Recreation Committee, I made a presentation to them last month, outlined the entire process that we went through. Um, it was a fairly uh, lengthy process, uh, a lot of questions, uh, a lot of people knew on the committee, they weren't quite sure what we had done before, um, and, uh, but it was a really a great opportunity for, for, for questions and education. Uh, they asked me to come back with what I thought would, should be the uh, new method for reviewing the policy. 
Um, I'm recommending, and it's, it's, um, uh, if you go to the web, it's on, it's on the web, the report's on the web, because the meeting's Thursday night, um, and that is, uh, I'm proposing that we do a market, re uh, market study of our neighboring municipalities, so that in order to assist us in setting the rate uh, for ice rinks, we are going to go around and find out what rates there are uh, in ice rinks around our other municipalities and find out where we are uh, in that range and whether we're at the average or above average or below average or wherever. Um, and that's our first step is to first of all compare ourselves to our neighboring municipalities. Um, and actually got an interesting email um, because one of the, the challenges or one of the things that philosophically that we're trying to do is, is keep our fees as low as we possibly can. So we try to keep our expenditures down, but we want to keep our fees down as low as possible because every time you raise a fee, you shut that door to someone or, or start uh, uh, putting a financial barrier up uh, for access. And interestingly enough, uh, on the agenda is an email from a resident who's quite upset that our fees for swimming are so low and really thinks that we should be higher because uh, people can afford to pay and so we should be looking at increasing our revenues uh, because we can. Um, and people from Newmarket are coming and swimming in our pools because it's more expensive to swim in Newmarket and, and uh, so we should be looking at maybe increasing our fees. I really don't want to look at uh, things in isolation like that. It's one of the reasons I'm suggesting we do a market research. Uh, find out what other neighboring municipalities are doing and, and then uh, taking a, uh, a real good look at um, where, how where and how we need to make those adjustments. Um, and um, uh, my recommendation will be that if there are increases, that they be uh, communicated through the uh, 2013 budget process. So um, that might be a good time for me to be on the TV and Sport Aurora and talk about uh, any fee increases that might be coming up or, or council is contemplating um, so that any, any um, affected members uh, could then come forward to council and voice any concerns or support for, uh, for any of the fee adjustments. So that's the, the process we're looking at right now. Any questions? If you didn't, it wouldn't affect you for a year. So, so, so I, I know if I, just the way the timing works, depending on what the, what the activity is, um, um, and depending on when council sets it. So, so if we set our fees uh, in February, and you've already had your registration, well then it won't be effective until, until the following registration period in 2014. Okay, uh, and, and we'd make that, we'd make that um, uh, clear to council in our presentation to council because um, uh, where, whenever it impacts, that's when, it's, that's, that's when it would, that, would, uh, uh, that would depend on the sport uh, as to when we could actually implement those new user fees. So I understand that. You can't do your membership and then come in after everything's, everyone signed up and raise your fees by $5 an hour. That wouldn't, uh, uh, that wouldn't be something that happened. Yes? That's a good question, Brent, and, and actually um, uh, that's the discussion that took place at our last meeting uh, and, and, and carried the, um, the committee through how we philosophically got to uh, what we felt was an appropriate sponsorship level uh, or, um, and, um, or subsidy level, not necessarily sponsorship level, but subsidization level, and that subsidization level varies depending on what type of activity. Um, so you can come anywhere from a 30% a subsidization up to a 70% subsidization depending upon what type of activity, and we've identified those types of activities. So that we've already established, and I'm not suggesting we go back and revisit that. Um, the committee may want to, it's not my recommendation but it's only my recommendation to the committee. So I'm suggesting we stay philosophically where we are and we simply do a market research to find out 
uh, where we are from the market perspective um, and, uh, and then do any tweaking we might have to do uh, from that perspective and then tie any fee changes back to that, that uh, um, subsidization, subsidization level. One of the challenges now after four years with regards to subsidization is that we were um, uh, previously when we were responsible for facility, for facility operations, we had, a, we had a tight control over what it actually cost to operate the facilities. That, that has now been transferred to another department. So to try to get that information from that department in order to add the cost to delivering the program is, is a little bit more difficult. And so I'm not suggesting that we do that um, in, in the interest of time. Yeah, I thought we did a really, really good job four years ago, and, uh, and I'm just not suggesting we do it all over again. Not yet. Maybe in another four or five years. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thanks. Uh, I'm pleased to share a progress update on the developments of our multi-use, all-seasons public project at Fleury Park. Um, when we, f we first introduced our project to you at the March AGM meeting of Sports Aurora, uh, since then, we've had coverage in the Aurora and in the Sports Aurora magazine that further describe what our intentions on, on developing this project. Um, the purpose of a, my brief, brief project uh, update is to inform Sports Aurora members of our plans and invite you, the members of Sports Aurora, to participate in our project as partners and users. Uh, I, I have a whole list of items here, but I'm only going to highlight a few of them in the interest of time, and these are, are the, the key highlights. Um, over the last uh, two or three years, we've sought input from our members at Aurora Community Tennis Club through uh, surveys uh, as to the creation of an all-seasons, all-weather public facility at Fleury Park. The overwhelming response directed the Aurora Community Tennis Club board to pursue this project. Two years ago, Aurora Community Tennis Club received a verbal approval from the Lake Simcoe Conservation Authority upon our inquiry that the tennis club wishes to develop an open-sided building for multi-use purposes in the floodplain of Fleury Park. This was a, a request uh, that went through the, uh, the Parks and Recreation uh, Director. Um, and uh, upon that green light approval from the, uh, the uh, Lake Simcoe Conservation Authority two years ago, the board designed several models and began developing our multi-use model. We further refined, refined the model by adding solar paneling to the roof, giving us the option to develop a co-op partnership with local sports and cultural groups for revenue generation to partners. And you, are, my fellow members of Sports Aurora, are those partners that we're uh, looking to, uh, to excite an interest in this project. And, and my, one of my calls to action is to, to keep that uh, top of mind for you uh, going forward. So in 2012, uh, we presented our plan to the Aurora Parks and Rec uh, Recreation Advisory Committee and received support and advice as to further developing our project. In March of 2012, we asked the Director of Recreation Services to seek the Lake Simcoe Conservation Authority approval for constructing two additional courts at Fleury Park. The two courts are needed at Fleury Park to make viable a business case for an all-seasons multi-use facility. In addition, two courts are slated for construction to meet the Aurora tennis community's requirements as per the Town of Aurora's master recreation plan. On June 1st, um, we learned that the Lake Simcoe C Conservation Authority has no issues with the town's request on the feasibility for constructing two additional courts at Fleury Park. This is wonderful news as the two additional courts allow us to continue developing our multi-use project. We are seeking, oh, we agreed uh, to a memorandum of understanding with the Windfall Ecology Center. This nonprofit organization would assist us with forming our solar panel cooperative and apply for government funds dedicated to such community projects as ours. 
We are seeking multi-use partners from diverse community sectors such as culture, arts, theater, and sports groups, both as users of the facility and or as partners in our solar panel cooperative. Upon the advice of, from the Director of Parks and Recreation, Aurora Community Tennis Club has sought delegate status at the June 26, 2012 Council meeting. We will present our plan and be included in the future discussions as budgets are developed for local initiatives. We do have a full presentation on our website, auroratennis.ca, and uh, we will have, uh, um, thanks to Javed and the great work on the, the website, uh, I'll be forwarding this uh, new content to you soon, and I'm really excited by the, uh, the work you're doing, particularly with that uh, TV work. So we hope to participate in that. So that is my update, and thank you for a few minutes of time. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.